Welcome back to Cardanities.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Do Third Parties Destroy Democracy? Arrow's Impossibility Theorem and the Problem of the Third Party. In this video, we are going to be looking at Arrow's Impossibility Theorem itself and the Problem of the Third Party. So, Kenneth Arrow's Impossibility Theorem claimed that there is no voting system which can choose between more than two candidates and satisfy all of our desirability criteria. Though we have yet to find a voting system that does this, we have not proven that no such system ever will. That there's no system in existence that can satisfy all of our desirability criteria for more than two candidates. In this video, we're going to do just that. We're going to do the full proof for basically a simpler version of Arrow's impossibility theorem, and then just give a statement of the more complicated one. So first we're going to look at a simplified version which demonstrates that no system that is choosing a single winner from more than two choices can satisfy unrestricted domain, unrestricted range, always a winner, independence of irrelevant alternatives, and the Condorcet win criterion. After that, we will look at and state, though not prove, Arrow's original theorem, which claims that no voting system that outputs a list of social rankings can satisfy unrestricted domain, unrestricted range, non-dictatorship, Pareto efficiency, and independence of irrelevant alternatives. We'll offer a proof of the first and save a proof of the second for a later date. This is because when I do proofs, I really like to do them line by line very logically, and we do not have the set theory background, or I haven't given you the set theory background in any of these videos so far to do that kind of a proof for this proof or this theorem. So hopefully we'll actually look at that when we get to set theory and higher order logic. We'll come back to Arrow's Impossibility Theorem and do a proof of it. So now, we're going to look at the first claim. We're looking at the following set of voting preferences below, and we're going to try to prove that if we assume unrestricted domain and unrestricted range, that independence of irrelevant alternatives and the Condorcet win criterion will create a situation where there may in some situations not be a winner. So it won't satisfy the always winner criterion. So what we're doing is we're imagining some voting system, we're not specifying what it is, which already satisfies independence of irrelevant alternatives and the Condorcet win criterion. We don't know what else it does, if it counts up points, if it does eliminations, we just know that it satisfies those two criteria. And we're going to demonstrate that a generic system that does just those two things will not always leave us with a winner. Okay? So, we'll look at the following kind of Condorcet paradox. We have voter A ranking Trump, Clinton, Johnson, voter B ranking Clinton, Johnson, Trump, and voter C ranking Johnson, Trump, Clinton. You'll notice that each candidate beats one of the other candidates and loses to one of the other candidates. So in this situation, there is no Condorcet winner. But that doesn't imply that something that satisfies the Condorcet win criterion will never give a winner. But let's take a look. First, we're going to prove that Trump is not a winner. And then we're going to do this with each of the candidates. We're going to prove that for that original scenario, none of them can be winners, no matter what criteria we're using. Imagine that voter B switches their preference for Johnson over Clinton. Note that no voter has changed their preference of Johnson to Trump or Trump to Johnson. What that means is this is an irrelevant alternative in regards to Trump and Johnson. Now, Johnson is the Condorcet winner. You'll see that Johnson beats both Clinton and Trump for B and C. He wins a majority. He wins first past the post. He wins most everything, which means that Trump cannot be a winner in this scenario. Clearly, Johnson is the winner, Johnson is the Condorcet winner, there's no way Trump can also be a winner. That's what the Condorcet win criterion says. It says, if there's a Condorcet winner, that person must be the only winner. So Trump is not a winner here. But remember, 
If we then took this scenario, switched back Johnson and Clinton, we would have an irrelevant alternative of this scenario. And assuming our voting methodology follows the independence of irrelevant alternatives and the Condorcet winner criterion, then Trump cannot be a winner in the original scenario because it's an irrelevant alternative to this one, and in this one, Trump was not a winner. So Trump has to maintain that non-winner status when going back to our original example. So we've proven that in the original scenario, Trump is not a winner. We're going to do the same thing and use the same method to prove that Clinton and Johnson are not winners either. So here, imagine that we look at this irrelevant alternative to Clinton versus Johnson, where voter A changes their preference to Clinton over Trump. Clinton is now the Condorcet winner, winning all the way down in both A and B, and so getting a majority against both Trump and Johnson. This means that no matter what our system is, if it obeys the Condorcet win criterion, the only winner in this scenario must be Clinton. So Johnson cannot be a winner in this scenario. But now let's look at an independent irrelevant alternative to this scenario, which was, once again, our original setup, that original paradox puzzle. Looking back at that, we realize that, in fact, Johnson can't be a winner there either, because we haven't changed anything in relation between Clinton and Johnson. Clinton still beats Johnson in the same number of situations. So Johnson also is not a winner in our original scenario. Hopefully, this is making sense so far, so you should be able to do this last one on your own, but I'll show it to you anyway. So finally, we'll prove that Clinton cannot be the winner in the original scenario. Take the scenario below. Once again, this is an irrelevant alternative between Trump and Clinton. We've just switched voter C's preference on Trump and Johnson. Trump must be the only winner to satisfy the Condorcet win criterion. He has to be the only winner here, no matter what voting system we use. So long as it satisfies Condorcet win criterion, Trump is the only winner. That means that Clinton is not a winner. If Clinton is not a winner in this one, in order to satisfy independence of irrelevant alternatives, Clinton cannot be a winner in the original scenario. Therefore, we have shown that in this situation, no system that satisfies the Condorcet win criterion and the independence of irrelevant alternatives will always produce a winner. Because there is one scenario, namely this one, where no system which satisfies the Condorcet win criterion and the independence of irrelevant alternatives will produce a winner. Now, even before moving on to the more complicated theorem, which I said we're going to just state instead of proving, this should be quite concerning. We had three very intuitive criteria, and then showed that no system could possibly ever satisfy them all. We've already looked at one way to solve this paradox, by limiting the field of candidates to only two, and the proponents of kind of a two-party system or of only voting between two choices are going to look towards that as a pretty strong argument to saying that, well, maybe we should get rid of third parties. But in the next video, we're going to look at some other ways to avoid this paradox, especially for the proponent of the third party. But now let's talk about Kenneth Arrow's impossibility theorem. It's arguably the most important discovery ever in voting theory. Kenneth Arrow was later awarded the Nobel Prize in economics due in large part to his work on this theorem. It makes the powerful claim that the only system which satisfies the unrestricted range and domain, the Pareto condition, and independence of irrelevant alternatives is a dictatorship. Due to the complexity of the proof, I will save it for a future video after I have made some more videos for you on set theory for reference. But the problem of the third party can now be stated. It goes like this. We want the Pareto condition. If we all prefer one candidate over another, the social choice will agree. And the independence of a relevant alternatives condition. Voters' preferences with regards to third parties should not affect the outcome of the two other candidates. We do not want to live in a dictatorship. If we assume those three things, the only way we can do this is to only ever consider two options. Let's take a look. So the argument might go like this. 
All fair systems are systems that satisfy unrestricted range and domain, the Pareto condition, independence of irrelevant alternatives, and non-dictatorship. No system which satisfies unrestricted range and domain, the Pareto condition, independence of irrelevant alternatives, and non-dictatorship is a system that has more than two choices. Therefore, no fair system is a system that has more than two choices. Or in other words, all systems which have more than two choices are unfair. And if you're curious, that's figure 2, A-E-E, -E, unconditionally valid. In the next video, we'll look at objections to premise 1. But unless you think you can beat Arrow's impossibility theorem, there's no objection in classical logic to premise 2. And to the form of the argument, as I showed, it's a logically valid syllogism. So the only place that someone could object, that the proponent of the third party could object, is in premise 1. If you find a system that you think can satisfy all these criteria, please post it below. Because remember, Arrow hasn't just proven that we have yet to find one, but rather that we can never find such a system. Next up, we are going to be looking at avoiding Arrow's impossibility. In that video, we're going to cover some of the ways that we can object to that first premise and maybe question some of those criteria that we've talked about so far. Watch this video and more here at carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.